I guess it's true. <laughs> so, um, works. so what you guys rating on the movie then? Uh, mine's 9.5. That's probably the highest rating I've given a film on this year. On this tier podcast here. Yeah, I would say a 9. Uh, a 9 for me. Yeah, I had to be up there with you, Chris. Uh, it, it, you know, almost a 10 right there. Um, definitely uh, deserves it, I feel. Yeah, 9.5. Great fucking choice. I Hopefully I'm invited back for the sequel. Yes. And for the... Zack Snyder Later. Justice League. <laughs> because, man, I got so much to say. And for it being four hours, and Wes, you know this about me, they still cut some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not big scenes. They could save 30 seconds here and there. That's all. It was just like, okay, it's it's like, you're, we don't need to see her singing in an Aquaman in the fucking water hole in his sweater. Huh. Which, where, where does he get the fucking sweater from when he comes up from the water? But what, yeah. I, I'll, I'm in that world, I believe whatever happens, but like, stop singing to the fucking water. He's gone. He's gone. Stop singing. Why are we watching her sing? Do you know this lady, Zach? Is that why she's getting screen time? What the fuck? That's the one part that stood out to me the most. But there's like little parts like that throughout the movie. Like, I mean, he needs extra time. I get it. He's like, we gotta make this thing like super fucking long to prove a point that like he didn't use any of my shit. But they still could have made little snippets. I'm sure they did, but like a little more. I mean, who are you, Damien Chazelle and the First Man? Fucking staring at Ryan Gosling for so long. Hey, 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 hey. Cool it. Cool it there, Bob. Hey, I, I like Damien, but, like, we don't need to stare at a, a mute astronaut for that long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, James, you got to check out um, the right stuff on Disney+. Plus. It's on the National Ooh. Geographic channel. The right have. stuff? The right stuff. Um, so it was a movie they did in, like, the 70s, I think, about, like, mm-hmm. the first... The Gemini mission, so the first astronauts, like test pilots and all that kind of stuff, with Neil Armstrong, not Neil, but um, John Glenn and all them, those mm-hmm. people. And uh, what they do, they do a, a series on it instead of like for the movie. The movie's great, check out the movie, but the series is awesome. If you like all that space shit, you'll love this. Okay. I'll check that out. Yeah. If you have free time, you know. Oh, yeah, I, got, I, got, I think I got some. I can spare some. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like I think ten, ten, eight or ten episodes. So okay, it's like a day. <laughs> yeah, I think we got one of those lying around. Nice, nice. I miss those days. <laughs> I still have them. I have them a lot. <laughs> um, so is it's your pick this week, right, Bess? Yes. Oh wait, do you have any? Is there any Swan fact for this? I do have some. If you guys want to hear, it's a great fucking movie. Swan fact. Boom. You're welcome. Go ahead. Swamp. All right. Actor uh, Colin Firth actually did 80% of his own stunts in the film, which is quite a bit. Damn. Uh, How how old is he? He's like in his 50s, right? I would like... I feel like that's how... Yeah, he looks like... Mid fifties, late fifties. I don't know. Yeah, that's that, that's top amazing top. for him just to even do that. That's cool. He got in uh, tip top shape for this as well, so he could actually perform and look the part. I know he's he's covered up uh, for most of his on screen time, but yeah, he he whipped himself into shape. As did uh, Taron Edgerton. He was like got up to one hundred and ninety four pounds and was like like most of that was muscle. And it was just because he was like, that's how I think that uh, somebody, my character should look on screen or whatever. It's crazy. There you go. Um, and it's tax right off. <laughs> <laughs> um, British intelligence uh, agencies actually used tailor shops as fronts during World Wars 1 and 2. I mean, it's kind of obvious. Why is a tailor shop open during World War 2? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any military going into that one. That's weird. The uh, the church fight sequence that you guys seem to love actually took seven days to finish. And, and on I, the eighth day, he rested. And I think uh, it took two weeks just to do that that water uh, scene. We get it. Your uh, suit is like longer and better to do whatever. <laughs> 
uh, DiCaprio, Tom Cruise, and Idris Elba all were considered for the role of the villain Valentine. Any thoughts on that? Um, it'd be interesting as DiCaprio. So I would love to see him with his like, you know, just sleeves rolled up, do whatever the fuck you want to do. He just uh, he, he just does uh, candy again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would like to see that. That'd be cool. I'd like to see that. Tom Cruise, we got to see his weird thing with uh, in um, Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. Thunder. Yeah. So, uh, Iridus Alba. I'd want to see Iridus Alba now, not then. You know, right? Yeah. Alba. I feel like he's gotten the short end of the stick. Like the guy's really good, but he's done some pretty bad movies in his time. Questionable uh, choices in in films. Yeah. It's not his fault, but it's like available for him too, though. Yeah, at first. Sure. But no, I meant now is like okay. I see his skill. I see what he does. How good of an actor he is. Now it'd be fun to watch him have fun with it. Back then, I think he was still kind of just new to us. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's only like six, six years now. And that came out in twenty seventeen. Was it? So three yeah, years he still ago. Wasn't, he still wasn't like you know like pumping out movies or not, not doing it now. But he's not as active as he is now. Yeah, so it's just like now it'd be fun to see him have fun with that kind of role. Oh, yeah. I liked him in that Netflix series where he played a DJ. Mm hmm. Yeah, he was in that one. He's a little lighter in that, so it's like I wouldn't mind seeing something like him now, but back then, no. I think Samuel Jackson was a great choice. And it's a guaranteed yes. You give Samuel Jackson a script, he's like, fuck yeah, motherfucker, I'll do it. You know? So he's there. <laughs> <laughs> Got a craft service table? I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> like him in the uh, the old boy remake. <laughs> I still haven't seen that. No, I want to. James, have you seen that one? No. Um, which one is that? Old boy with uh, Josh Brolin. It's the. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yeah, he's, only, I've only seen that version. He's super over the top in that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Right. But, yeah. So there's certain actors I would love. Like I'd love to see. Caprio start having fun now. Not do like wacky comedies, but like just surprise people every now and then. Well, he's doing that new Maybe. one with uh, who's uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence it's supposed to be a comedy. Oh, that's true. Let's see how it works out. Oh yeah. If he's like shivering in it, it might be good. Oh man, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Another three month band coming up. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make you do a Revenant episode just to piss you off. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Dude, I'll- I'll watch it and I'll blow Tom Hardy the fuck up because that's, who deserves, that's the winner of that fucking film. But the only thing is, I love Tom Hardy just as much, so you're not really. You can't rip two things just as much. You can't do that. You just have to have a favorite. Did you not see The Crown this season? You have to have a favorite child. I haven't seen The Crown, sir, because I have better things to do. Really? Okay. The Crown's only going to win like Emmys and shit, but whatever. Golden Globes you can buy, Emmys you can just bribe. <laughs> All right, Kick-Ass star Aaron Taylor Johnson was offered the role of Eggsy first, but declined uh, the role at the time. He did, however, jump on board for the upcoming third entry uh, for the prequel. He's going to be in it. Oh. And I think that's supposed to release sometime in 2021, this year. I'm not sure if that's actually still relevant or not as far as that slate, but... Um, should yeah, be- it was supposed to be 2020, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it still Warner Brothers? Are we going to get this on HBO Max too? Or? No, I didn't um, see that in the slate, actually. Go ahead. I don't really care for him. I like him in Godzilla. But I didn't really care for him in Avengers. And I like Savages. So yeah, he's a good, he's a good actor. It'd be interesting what they do with him. Have you seen the that indie film he did as uh, John Lennon? Nowhere Boy, I think it's called? Yes, yeah, I did. I have seen that. It was, he was good. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It was an interesting movie. It was, was kind of cool. Yeah, and my final swan fact for this episode, the comic book was originally supposed to be about the U.S. Secret Service. Uh, those <laughs> fuckers. <laughs> those other fuckers. Took it from us after we <laughs> saved them in World War One and World War Two. If they like brought the statesman into it, but like in the, in the sequel, if they bring the US version was statesman into it and if that was the comic I'm like okay well at least they're bringing that back but to fucking steal it like that 
we're not going to make James Bond a CIA agent, although he should be. He'd be a better spy, but whatever. What's interesting about this is the um, the author of Kick Ass is the same. He wrote uh, Kingsman as well, the the graphic novel. So obviously mm-hmm. they have a him and Matthew Vaughn have a close relationship. But it's in- interesting to me that he he you know like Kick Ass is so much different than than Kingsman. Although the you know of course the action. Uh, both yeah. in the in the books and the adaptation are similar. They're like on you know, completely different spectrums as far as the story. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I remember watching the uh, special features for Kick Ass and how they they didn't want to cast a British actor to play an American boy, so they went to New York and California to try to find someone, and they ended up auditioning what's his name, a British actor in California, and gave him the part. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was like it was they, they wanted to try to make it like they're shooting over in the UK, but they still want to try to make it an American movie, so they didn't want a, a British actor playing an American. But they end up disliking him so much. So, it was neat, nice little story. It's kind of funny. Me and James little, also a did a we did an episode on Kick Ass back in the day as well. So go back and listen to Ooh. that if you want, <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Check that one out. Chris isn't on it though, so if you're a fan of Chris, you might not like it. I'll just let you know. <laughs> and we're nearing the end of the show. For next week, we're gonna be end we're gonna end up releasing probably two episodes because uh, Chris Pollock and I are gonna do an episode on the original Robocop. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's coming next week as well. And then I just got. Uh, I just. I'm, I've been talking to an artist today, and he wanted to do Looper. Ah, uh, okay. So Ryan Johnson's uh, Looper with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis, which is a great uh, sci-fi time travel flick. Pretty oh, underrated. Yeah. Emily yeah. Blunt. Especially when they go, don't ask questions about it. It just gets confusing. Yeah. That's the fucking best line <laughs> in any sci-fi movie. <laughs> don't ask questions about it. It's just confusing. Just buy it. Just, just go along with the story. <laughs> so the, the blunder, blunder bus, the, the gun. Oh yeah. Is that right. Yep. Fuck them. Yeah. It's a great movie. Paul Dano, the future Nicholas Cage is in it. All right, James, tell everybody out there, uh, what we do and where they can find us. All right, so uh, we are available on every single platform that plays podcasts or uh, that you can listen to podcasts on, whether it's iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, Sodes, um, uh, Stitcher, Breaker, um, a handful of other ones that were on pretty much everything. Like I said, that can play podcasts were on there. And uh, if you have the time, we'd be eternally grateful. Uh, if you could give us a, a thumbs up, a five stars, positive review, whatever it may be, um, if you have the time, please do that. Uh, send, you know, share some links over to your friends on Facebook. Uh, um, send them to your coworkers, your relatives, whoever if you think they might enjoy these episodes that we're doing. If you like this episode and you want to hear more, we have a uh, huge archive of uh, tons of episodes prior to this one. Um, you can go back and, and check out everything if you'd like. If you have some time, go ahead and do that. Um, we also are available on, um, or you can get in contact with us uh, through Instagram. We have one of those. It's uh, at drop the mic underscore podcast, where me and Wes are both attached to that. And uh, we're uh, constantly updating uh, what we're, our weekly uh, episodes going to be, where our weekly wrecks are. Um, you can let us know if you've seen the wrecks that, we've, uh, that we're putting out there. Uh, if you liked them, if you hated them. And uh, hopefully we can have a nice little debate on uh, if you hate them. So that'd be cool. Um, also, you can uh, recommend a film. Uh, just write us in the comments or DM us. Uh, either way, it doesn't really matter. We'll uh, respond to you as quickly as we can. And um, and hopefully we can get a, a film out that, uh, an episode out that uh, customer, uh, customer, a uh, listener um, requested. So that'd be, that'd be fun to do also. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. Very nicely put. What about- uh, I want to say thank you to uh, Chris for coming on this uh, episode. I know it's been a while. Uh, his uh, he's, his his uh, ban from the epi- from the the show has been revoked. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, Return. He, he's on parole now. You know, he's uh, with with good good behavior. You know, you'll see him again. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but no. they'll hear me. I-